الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم المال والبنون زينة الحياة الدنيا صدق الله العظيم The ayah that I have just recited to you, or rather say, portion of the ayah that I have just recited to you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling something to the human beings that we all know about. However, He wants to emphasize that yes, you are right in this, that indeed your wealth and your kids, your offsprings, their offsprings, they are the beauty, they are the attractiveness of your life in this world. So indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, yes, it's the beauty, something that you take pride in. However, if you read around it, the rest of the Qur'an tells us, when is it really that when you should take pride in these things, that when your wealth is accumulated using the right means, when your wealth is spent on the right places, when your kids are on the right path, When your family is guided, and of course you have to be guided yourself first, then it is all the beauty. Otherwise, it will going to be something which is burdensome in the life hereafter. And some of us have seen around that when things are not in place, they cause trouble. They got problems. And a lot of the time those problems can be fixed when things are in right place. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an guides us step by step what you must do to maintain the harmony in this world. First rule Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, وَعْبُدُ اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيَّةً You have to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Do not associate anybody with Him. Now what is the beauty of that? The beauty of that is when you are believing that the source of my information is one, now you're reliant on that source. But if the source of information are many, then you're confused. And that's exactly what happens. Now if you go out and do a research on any subject matter, you will find multiple opinions on it. So now you're like, okay, is this correct or is that correct? But here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, your source is me. I am the one from whom the guidance will come. And I will send the messengers and the prophets to guide you. And I will send the books to guide you. Once you take that guidance, then you will be fixed. Now the second portion of the same ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَادًا Be extremely nice and humble. And at your character, be at the highest level of your character towards your parents. towards your parents, which includes parents, 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 and it goes on like that. The idea is that sometimes when we are youthful, we get easily mad, and we lose our temper. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no, even in the most direst situation, when Ibrahim's father, Azar said, Ibrahim, I will stone you to death if you stone. Do not wor- preaching me to worship one God when I am worshiping multiple gods. That was the point where he was committing shirk. And he asked Ibrahim, do not preach me. Rather, if you continue preaching me, I will punish you. And it will be a capital punishment. Even at that moment, Ibrahim salam said, peace. Peace unto you, dad. Peace. That was the highest sin. That is the highest sin that could have been committed on the face of the earth. And is being committed. But even at that time, he did not lost his temperament. And he was a young man. He was a young man. Quran calls at that time, Ibrahim was fata. So youth, 
is no excuse to lose temperament. You have to train yourself. It's a training. You know, there is something called anger management. Some people have to go through training of that to manage their anger. When we are at work and you're really, really mad, that's not the best time to write email to the person that you are mad at. Because once you hit that send button, it is now an evidence against you in the court of law. So if you really, really want to do something and you really want to outburst, this is what I have done in the past. I open my personal email, I write in the two my own email, and I put all my feelings there. So even if I send it, I'll send it to myself, to nobody else. And then when I cool down, calm down, and I've taken out my outburst and not angry anymore, now it's time to calm down and pay emphasis on where things went wrong. Maybe it was my mistake. Maybe it was other person's mistake. So let's come on the common ground and figure out how can we solve the problem. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala constantly tells us in the Quran, solve the problems. Don't create the problems. And hold the hands that create the problems. Or take proper channels against those who create problems. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clearly tells the parents and the kids, there are rights of each of you, on each of you. It's not like they're only parents' rights, or it's not like they're only kids' rights. Now think about it. A lot of us who are grown up, sitting over here, first generation, second generation, there were times when we were kids, that there were times when other people were taking care of the worldly affairs, and we came in power. Now we are running the business. And we start complaining about things that didn't happen right before us. How about the generation which will going to come in place of us? What are we doing for them? What kind of world are we giving it to them? What kind of training are we giving it to them? That when they become part of the workforce, are they ethical people? Are they liars? Are they cheaters? Are they backbiters? Are they a bunch of angry people? Or they're all the way around. They're the best of the best people. Not to impress anybody. That's the worst thing that you can do to yourself, to start living a life for others. Don't live life for others, because that causes stress. And you split your personality into two people. Don't do that to yourself. Bring the change from within. Be that person naturally. Naturally be that individual. And it will not going to come easy. I'm telling you, the reason is, we all know, khutuwati shaytan are everywhere. Because he has a job to do. So there is a process that you have to take. But do not lose hope. Do not lose hope. Because you are getting rewarded for trying also. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you have to be extremely kind to this generation that you are bringing forth. I will going to share with you a few hadith. The first one is reported by Nu'man bin Bashir about his dad Bashir. He said, my dad Bashir bin Sa'ad took me to the Prophet and told the Prophet that to this one son I have Nu'man I have given him a slave to serve him. And the Prophet asked him, you have more than one son, right? He said, yeah. Did you give each one of them a slave? He said, no. Then the Prophet said, then also take it from him. Because that's injustice. This is reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Another hadith reported by Imam Abi Dawood. Do not ask me, the Prophet says, do not ask me to be a witness to injustice. Your children have the right of receiving equal treatment as you have the right that they should honor you. So it goes both ways. You respect them, you give them the rights, they respect you, they give you your honor. Another hadith reported by Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Fear Allah and treat your children with equal justice. 
At the same time, we also notice, may not be here, but places around the world, in our families, maybe people we may know, where there is justice, but on genders. They do not treat their sons and daughters the same way. They'll have more emphasis on sons and less emphasis on daughters. So what does the Quran, what does the Prophet tell us about that? The Prophet, peace be upon him, exalted the reward of anyone who take a good care of and educate girls properly. And the Prophet said, he who brought up two girls properly till they grew up, he and I would come together very closely on the day of resurrection. And then the Prophet put two of his fingers next to each other just to show the closeness. Reported by Imam Muslim. Now when we talk about upbringing, upbringing includes a lot of things. We are not living in 7th century. In these times, there is a right to education for every individual. Think about it. An illiterate mom, how would she raise literate kids when you are busy out work? Some of you may be working second shift, third shift. How would you going to help with the homework? She can't even take her pills. She's reliant on everybody to tell her what does it say. So education is a must. Even if she stays home, even if she's part of workforce, doesn't matter. For every individual education is required. That is why Prophet Muhammad وسلم, in the Madani period, his life in Medina, he made sure even girls knew how to read and write. And the wives of the Prophet وسلم, who were younger in age, who were at the age of learning, he made sure that they know how to read and write. And because of those individuals who had a longer span of life than the others who were at older age, they were able to narrate so much what happened inside the house. So education is very important. It opens up your horizon, the way you think, it, opportunities that you can explore. So love is extremely important. Now when we talk about the word fitna, in the Quran, fitna comes in many ways. Fitna not all, always means something very negative. Yes, al-fitnatu ashaddu min al-qatl. In that, it is extremely negative that causing chaos on the face of earth is more than killing somebody. Because a fitna has a very long-lasting effect. However, fitna also means a test. So when somebody is given a test, that's a fitna for them. And see if they can succeed through the test or not. Hadith that I'm about to share with you, that Abi Buraida radiallahu ta'ala anhu says, كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ يَخْطُبُنَا The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam was giving us the khutbah. إِذْ جَاءَ الْحَسَنُ وَالْحُسَيْنِ And the Hassan and the Hussein were very little kids. They enter into the Masjid al-Nabwi. عَلَيْهِمَا قَمِيصَانِ أَحْمَرًا They were wearing red shirts, long ones. يَمْشِيَانِ وَيَعْثِرًا And they were walking and falling and walking and falling. Looks like they were extremely young. And what did the Prophet do? فَنَزَلَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ مِنَ الْمِنْبَرِ The Prophet left the member, went and grabbed them, and brought them next to, and said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said it true in the Qur'an in Surah Al-Taghabun, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ وَأَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ Here, إِنَّمَا أَمْوَالُكُمْ مِنْ أَوْلَادُكُمْ فِتْنَةٌ is the test. Your wealth and your offspring are your test. And it's hard to sometimes hold your emotions when it comes to your wealth and when it comes to your offspring. But still, the test is, what decision do you make? Do you make a right decision? Or you get overwhelmed by their love and make a wrong decision. Now, so many people in the past, when they were caught in corruption, 
They said, well, we were overwhelmed by our families because we wanted to provide for them a better future. We didn't do it for ourselves. That's exactly the failed in the fitna. So if you are serving your family, what are you serving them with? Halal or haram? Right or wrong? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, yes, there are times when you are put through the test. How do you come out of that test? In another hadith, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, when he would pray, كان يصلي وهو حامل أمامة بنت زينب Now Prophet Muhammad had a granddaughter too. This is from his oldest daughter Zainab. Her name was Umama. She lived past the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam many years after the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. She didn't bear any kid. But this was the daughter of the oldest daughter of the Prophet Muhammad. Her name was Umama bint Zainab, bint Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. And the father was um, Al-As bin Rabia. Anyway, the Prophet would actually hold her while he would pray when she was little. And when he would go in sijda, he will put her down. And then when he would get up again, he will hold her again. So this is kind of showing you the love that the person has. But the decisions must come out right. Now the ayah from Surah Al-Luqman which talks about the obedience of parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَوَصَّيْنَا الْإِنسَانَ بِوَالِدَيْهِ And we have enjoined on men to be dutiful and good towards their parents. Remember, your mom carried you for nine months and she bore it all the hard labors. Then she gave you birth. After that, for two years she fed you. During those three some years time period, she didn't see you, right? Night or day. When you need it, she was there. Even if she had difficulty, she went through that difficulty. Now think about it, 